Did you miss me? stupid introduction since I pretty much upload videos on a daily basis so um, yeah slightly awkward. Hi guys and so welcome to a surprise edition of the Oktoberfest because if you saw yesterday's video I thought that was going to be the end one and uh, the video is already rendered it's already uploaded this has been uh, a little bit of a mess to be honest has the clueless totally clueless oktoberfest 2017 enjoyable but um yeah it's been quite ridiculous all the same themes change i say things in one video then completely counteract that one in the next and now i'm back in the uk and uh, yeah, I don't have all those wonderful German beers at my disposal. Although, funny enough, I think I've got better access now to the Augustina Oktoberfest than I did when I was back in Germany. So, uh, who knows? There might be another video in this series. I just don't know. I'm not going to make any promises from now on because they just seem to fall through. Today's Oktoberfest beer isn't a German one, it's an American one. And I've always been intrigued about the American brewed Oktoberfest beers because I know some people say there's really nothing to an Oktoberfest beer. But I'm interested in the American perspective because, well, a lot of places in America seem to have um, an Oktoberfest of some, some sort. They celebrate it. I mean, Urban Chestnut. They're very heavily influenced by German brewing to the point where they've actually got a brewery now in Germany. And uh, Hofbräu, massively popular. Uh, and I'm sure my good friend Rob JB Adventures will be able to correct me on this one. But I think Cincinnati, if I remember correctly, has the second biggest Oktoberfest festival in the world. The first being the actual Oktoberfest in Munich. Which, ironically, as I'm recording this video, it's actually happening. And I'm seeing some really wonderful videos and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I can carry on this series, even if it's just for one more video. Because I've got a, I've got a place in my heart for these beers. Am, am I touching my heart? Yes, I am. Anyway, today we're going over to the Flying Dog Brewery. And this is a bottle of the Doc Dogtoberfest Mertzen. Clocking in at 5.6%, and uh, as you can see by the label, it was initially £3.10, then reduced to £2. I got it for a quid from the Northern Beer Temple in Wigan, in the northwest of England. Fantastic little shop, and uh, just came out of nowhere. And now Wigan has uh, a really cool craft beer bar, they've got some awesome real ale pubs as well as well as the bottle shop, and they've got some up-and-coming craft breweries who are doing some really interesting beers, so uh, who'd have thunk that Wigan, a place that I'm guessing 90% of you watching this have never heard of in your life, would have a really nice little craft beer scene. As soon as I saw this for a pound, I just had to pick it up, and uh, yes, it is past its Best Buy date, because the Best Buy date is the 23rd of the 8th, 2017. So this is a really early brewed um, Oktoberfest beer. Not too sure exactly when Flying Dog bring out their Dogtoberfest beers, but um, yeah, it's not going to be fresh, but a beer of this style, you're not going to be losing too much character, one would presume, um, with it being a little bit old. But uh, as always with the Flying Dog labels, fantastic artwork. And uh, it's got the signature of the artist there. Can never remember his name, but I'm sure he's done uh, like the artwork for the novelization, well, the actual book of um, Hunter S. Thompson's um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Um, it's not Robert Crumb. I don't know why I'm thinking of Robert Crumb and Arch Spiegelman. Um, it's not those two. I always forget the name, and that's sacrilege because I'm a big fan of. You know, graphic design and illustration but that's what I really like about the Flying Dog beers is the labels are just absolutely insane. Uh, unfortunately I only got one bottle of this in a 355ml 
and uh, don't have my big stein with me because I was not bringing that over from Germany because that would have taken up a fair bit of space and also cut into my uh, baggage allowance. But I've got sort of like a, a shrunken one. Uh, very British, like half dimpled mug. So, uh, yeah, completely changed the format, completely changed my appearance and location. It's a great series, I'm sure you will agree. And I bet you're so excited to see if I do this again next year. Probably not. But a uh, yeah, fantastic crown there. So, um, yeah, let's get this one open then. Never had this one before, never seen it in the UK before either. But I'm guessing it is uh, every year widely available um, for the craft beer market. But uh, yeah, let's see what we get with this. Had to rinse this mug out because um, yeah, it had a little bit of dust in there. But um, all that's to flavour, I suppose. Getting no head whatsoever in that beer, but yeah, definitely a Mertzen in appearance. Um, lovely. I don't know, it's got like a faint hint of haze to it, but not too much. You wouldn't expect that. But yeah, lovely sort of um, nutty caramel sort of look to it. Uh, lovely malt, multi appearance in this beer. Very surprised that there's no head whatsoever, but I'm hoping that's just due to the glassware, not the beer itself. It looks a little bit more markier than some of the Mertzens that I've had from Germany. Little taste of Germany, courtesy of America. Let's give it a smell. And that's got a lovely, like, malted loaf aroma to it. Nice, subtle, almost like ginger aroma in there. Lovely cinnamon, vanilla tones. Slightly reminds me of uh, my limited experience with these um, pumpkin spiced sort of beers. But yeah, lovely malty, gentle chocolatey tones. There's a nice gentle earthiness there as well from the hops. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more sweeter than some of the German brewed ones. And yes, I will be keep on comparing it to a German brewed Märzen. But I've got to say, that's a lovely smelling beer. Um, it's got like this sort of like maple syrup character as well. Very surprised at how sweet and toffee-like this beer is on the aroma. Anyway, the important thing is, how does it taste? Let's give it a go. Prost! That's really nice. That is really, really nice. It seems to have lost a bit of the carbonation though, but it's not flat. And it actually adds a nice level of uh, drinkability to what is already a very drinkable by nature style of beer. Getting a bit more of a berry character coming through on this one. Has that very slight mulled wine sort of um, flavour to it. Lovely sweet malt character as well. It's got a little bit of a clawing clove like character on the back end which is uh, a really intriguing twist. There's like this very slight brandy-like flavour coming through as well on the back end. It's not boozy, but it sort of tastes a little bit like brandy. Yeah, it's got this sort of like, it is reminding me of like a pumpkin spiced ale. It's reminded me of like a, a winter mould like Christmas beer. This, it's not as sweet on the flavour as it is on the aroma. Which, if it was to like drink as sweet as it smells, this would be so goddamn sickly. But it, it actually is a little bit sickly sweet after a while. Um, I don't know if I'd want to buy a six pack of this one. But it, it sort of it sort of falls into what I would consider an Oktoberfest style medicine. But then it sort of deviates into different styles. But I think it is a perfect beer for the Oktoberfest season in America. It has like almost like a slight brown ale um, earthiness to it. You are getting the vanilla and the cinnamon in there as well. Look at that bit of this. Looks a bit nicer now that it's got a head. One finger of a nice, slightly pale tan coloured head. Yeah, to me, this is just like. 
yeasted doughs. Um, like, um, come over an example beer if you're going to say that. Like hot cross buns. It's got that sort of flavour to it. Like a nice glazed, yeasted dough sort of like dessert with maybe like some currants in there. That like mould character really hits that part. How yeah, that was, that's an intriguing take on the style, which is fundamentally a classic Nerdson, but it just has little twists and tweaks that you wouldn't get back in Germany. But at the same time, it doesn't deviate too far away from what it's supposed to be. So it is sort of built for purpose. But I don't know if I would like session the shit out of this one, um, just because it does get a little bit too sickly sweet for me. But you know what, this would be like one of those beers after you've had like a nice crisp golden fest beer or like two or three steins and you know the night's coming to a close, you're about to get ready to go home and you want just one more beer for the road. I think this, the sweetness will just round off that drinking experience. But um, yeah, I mean this tastes nice and this is you know past its best by date. Um, I'm not too sure how it would taste fresh, whether or not um, different flavours would have come into play. There is a, like a slight mineral-esque tannic note to it, which I'm not the biggest fan of. And again, it does claw on the back end a little bit. But um, you know what, we're in uh, the mid part of September now. It's perfect for the season, it's a little bit colder outside. Uh, it's not too cold though, so you could still sit outside and have some food. And um, yeah, this this would go well with. Uh, I can imagine this going really well with like just a nice, big, salted buttered pretzel. Yeah, I think that would be a really nice combination. Um, so uh, yeah, a very nice surprise indeed from Flying Dog Brewery with their Dogtoberfest, <coughs> which I'm guessing that this is this year's batch. I'm not too sure, but then again. The fact that it's got a best before date in 2017 uh, says to me anyway that it's last year's batch so I'm not sure how I'm going to actually label this video but I'm sure when I do a little bit of research as I upload it I'll be able to iron out all the creases in terms of that so um, yeah if you've tried this one give me your thoughts and opinions on it. Flying Dog we're getting a lot more beers from these guys appearing especially in the supermarkets now which is more of like their core range anyway but it's still a very welcome addition to the supermarket aisles and you know what for a quid for an, impor an Im imported for an imported American beer that I don't see very often I can't really complain about it it's just a little bit too sickly sweet for me and has that mineral-esque edge, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But in terms of a rating for the Dogtoberfest Mertz, and I'm going to give that a very solid 7 out of 10. I'd happily try this a little bit more fresher, just to see um, how it tastes. And I'm not sure if, like, year from year, from year uh, the batch changes in terms of flavour profile. Um, it's definitely an intriguing addition to the Totally Clueless Oktoberfest and uh, hopefully next time I do this I'll be able to get a few more of the American brewed ones and potentially some British brewed Oktoberfest style beers because I can't really think of any off the top of my head. But um, yeah, so this could be the last video of Totally Clueless Oktoberfest. Uh, thank you for joining me, thank you for putting up with just the sheer absurdity of what this series has become. And uh, yeah, if there's more videos, I'm happy to drink more of these Oktoberfest beers. You know, just keep going and going and going and going as long as I can. But um, don't think that'll be the case. If I can get the Augustina Oktoberfest beer in time, it's going to be part of this one. If not, it'll probably be its own separate video. I don't know. I'm not going to make any promises. But um, yeah, if any of my friends or fellow beer tubers have reviewed this one, then of course their reviews are down below. Check out Flying Dog Brewery as well. Don't know if I've got any of their beers uploaded on the channel, but if I have, then the playlist will be down below. Check out the Totally Clueless playlist, uh, Totally Clueless Oktoberfest playlist, of course. 
And uh, yeah, I hope you've been enjoying this series. So uh, any Oktoberfest stories, memories, were you there this year? Are you going next year? Do you ever plan to go? I, I want to hear all of that in the comments down below. So um, yeah, thank you guys. And uh, there may be another one tomorrow. Who the hell knows? And it feels good to be able to say this. Vielen Dank und Prost. Prost. Now go away. Thank you.